Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 34 and the Lord said unto Moses, Hew the two tables of stone. Now this is not an altar. When God says when you take a rock and you're going to make an altar, don't put no metal tools to it. This is, this is the tablets of the Ten Commandments and other writings. Hew the two tables of stone like unto the first. So this is the second tables of the law. Moses destroyed the original. And God says, okay, fine, I'll just make a copy. It's that easy. I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first table. So they find the copies. All right, I dare you to go find the first copies of the tables of the law and try to copy anything from them because they're fragments and they're gone. And God says, I'll make a better one. I'll just redo it for you. How's that sound? And then the little side note, P.S., which thou breakest. Isn't God so great to remind us of our sins that we may confess them and get right with God? You broke them, Moses. Got a little angry there, didn't you, Moses? And that's one of the sins that Moses had that will cause him trouble. And be ready in the morning, second advent, and come up in the morning onto Mount Sinai. That's where the Lord's going to come. In the second advent. That uh, king's highway route. And present thyself. There to me. In the top of the mount. How many times. Uh, I, I keep losing track. But how many times Moses is going up and down. Up and down. Up and down this mountain. He's 80 years old. But man. God is giving him strength. And no man shall come up, only you, Moses, with thee. Neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. No one else. Even Joshua was not allowed this time. Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto the Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And took in his hand the two tables of stone. Now I have Jeremiah 36, 28. Let's see what that is. Might be interesting. Not nah, it's the word of God. And we can read it. 38, 20, 36, 28. Turn my pages. 36, 28. Thirty-six twenty-eight. All right, this is this is the story of the word that's been written by Baruch out of the mouth of Jeremiah, and it's read before the king. And we'll start verse twenty-three about the original. And it came to pass that when Jehadai had read three or four leaves, he cut it with a penknife. And cast it into the fire that was on the hearth. Until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. The originals are burned. They're gone. Uh, too bad we can't finish Jeremiah 36. Yet we have 36. 36 was just burned. So verse 28 
God speaking, take thee again another roll, and write in it all the former words that were the first roll, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burned. And you see how it matches over here? Remember the ones you broke? Remember the ones he burned? Well, just get yourself another roll, get yourself another set of rocks. I will write. So, and then we get verse 32, just real quick. Then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe, the son of Nehemiah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah again, verbally inspirated, all the words of the book which Jer Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. All right. God's going to write everything that Moses broke. It's going to be written. Everything that burned in the fire. And there were added besides unto them many like words. Well, what was added to that? Scroll. Verses 27 to 32. And the fact is, verses 23 and 26, because it's recorded, God said, I'll tell the story of how that roll was burned. So if you want the original, Two places in your Bible, it's impossible to get the originals. I wonder what happened to the, those first broken commandments. They're never, re I mean, can you go over there? Is it possible to find these commandments? Or uh, have they been completely destroyed? That role has been completely destroyed in the fire. And the Lord descended, that means he came down in the cloud. That's Jesus Christ. We're going to go in the clouds and then we're going to go above the clouds and see the Lord Jesus Christ. That's second advent when he comes down for the Jews. He cometh with clouds. One of the prophets say, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Is it not darkness? Is it not a cloudy day? Is it not a revengeful God coming? That's why I kept saying, In the morning, in the morning. And stood with them there. Stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Well, Moses already knew that. I am. And the Lord. The Lord. The Lord God. There is the Trinity of God in verse 6. The Lord passed before him. As he said he would. Previous chapter. In verse 22 or 33. It shall come to pass. While my glory passes by, I will, put, I will put thee in a cleft of the rock. I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Because you can't see his face. And the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. In chapter 33, we see Moses, verses 12 and 13 through 15. He wants... The grace, uh, the mercy of God. He wants the grace of God. And here it is. Merciful and gracious. Thank God Israel says this one long suffering. If God wasn't long suffering, they would be dead by now. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish. The long suffering of God, he wants all men to be saved. Why has not the rapture happened already? The long-suffering God. Why did Jesus come so late in Israel's history? Long-suffering. And abundant in goodness and truth. So try to match your, match your goodness with the abundant goodness and truth. In John 14, 6, like Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. <laughs> well, there's Jesus then again. So, the Lord passed by him. He said in verse 22, speaking to Moses, I will pass by. That's God. Jehovah. The Lord, the Lord God, that's Jesus, the, the truth, the goodness. The only goodness I got is Jesus Christ. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity. That's Jesus. That's God. And transgressions and sin. That's the finished work of Jesus Christ. That will by no means.
clear the guilty. That's before the work of Jesus Christ. That's before Calvary. That's before the empty tomb. When they died, they went to Abraham's bosom. All right, you done in the law what you're supposed to do. That sounds so good. All right, now I'm dead. Nothing let me into heaven. I can't. You still got guilt. And when Jesus died, they rose from the grave. And when Jesus Christ raptures the church, when we go up. Today, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord because we are on this side of Calvary and the empty tomb. Not the Old Testament saints. Christ had not died. They, they went to Abraham's bosom because they'd done what God told them to do, but the blood of animals and goats and all that could not clear them. Hebrews tells us. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. That's interesting. What's that? What's that quote? Let's go back to 20. Chapter 20. Let's see that quote. God's not thrown into their face what they've done. Chapter 20, verses 5. And thou shalt not bow thyself to them. Uh-oh. And serve them. Uh-oh. I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. There's that quote. God's reminding them that sin you guys were involved with. The only thing he's missing is the hate. And you say, well, that's for Moses. Then why is it recorded? Do you realize that if Moses did not break the originals, we would not have 34? If, if God did not allow Moses to come up and get... I don't know what you would call it, but to replace the originals, would you have ever read verse 6 like we just read in verse 7? It would not be in our Bibles. Verses 6 and 7 and on, what we're going to read is in there because of the, the originals were destroyed. And we saw that in Jeremiah chapter 36, and there was added more. Now, Jeremiah shows us the inspiration. Man wrote the Bible. Yes, 100%. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And I will say, listen, man is the pen, but the Holy Spirit is the ink. Well, here, look at this one. The originals have been destroyed, and God says, okay, heal me another rock, and I will write on them again. And Moses made, ha uh, made haste, and bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. He's in that cleft of the rock. And he still has to bow his head. And he said, if now I have found grace in thy sight, uh, mercy and gracious, Keeping mercy for thousands. In thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go amongst us. For it's a stiff-necked people. There's one thing God and Moses has gotten in common. Those people are stiff-necked, and they are. I heard someone say, the, uh, it's been a while, that nationalities of people does not bring their attitude or their their feelings or what they're dealing with, stereotyping. Well, it's kind of funny that Moses and God have stereotyped the Jews, isn't it? You're going to accuse God, of, uh, God, you know, the Jews are not like that. Well, Moses and God has come to the conclusion that the, the, the pastor of these people and the God of these people say, hey, you're stiff-necked people. And pardon our iniquity and our sins. And this is what Daniel does. He prays for the sins of the nations as himself and the people involved. He says, Lord, we've sinned. As Daniel does, as Moses does, Lord God, we have sinned. Pardon our sin. And it's not just the, the, the calf. I mean, they're sinning all along. Lying. False thoughts. And take us. For thy inheritance. Look how Moses is stepping in with himself for the people that is under him. The congregation of, and look how he's standing and loving the people. 
If your pastor is called a minister and he don't pray and take care of his people and get in tears before God and say, God, you know, we know that they're sinners. We know they got troubles, but some of them want to do it. Lord God, will you help us all? You ain't got a minister. You got a minister by title only. A man's going to be in that pulpit before a flock of sheep. He's going to want to kill the, his time by praying, by helping, by dressing the wounds, by searching those that are, are, are abandoning themselves. He said, God, behold, I make a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels. I'm trying to think, what's that cartoon magazine called? The Marvels? Something like that. Such as have not been done in all the earth. Wow. Look, he has override everything he's done in Egypt. You haven't seen nothing yet now. You wait to see the things I'm going to do next. You know, he's going to have the earth open up and swallow an entire family and close it back. Now, we've had down here in Florida, we've had uh, sinkholes. But there's still holes. God makes a sinkhole and says, okay, I'll put the cap on it. Like it never happened. They're going to go marching around the city, marching around the city, and then blow the trumpets, shout, and then the walls are going to fall down without one bullet being fired. Without dynamite, without a wrecking ram. That's a marvel. And then when you look at it today, as you go online, look up the, the, the sites that they've done there. And here's this entire wall down, but here's this one piece of wall still there. And it's a room, <laughs> as the Bible has said. You ever wonder, you know, as they're marching away from, Jer from, from Jericho, they're looking like, wow, that's, that was weird. Nor in any nation. So get your butt out of your head being, oh, we're Americans, we're Christian. No, 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 no. There's only one nation above all the nations. And Adolf Hitler had it wrong. His Germany is gone. It's the Jew. It's not the United Nations. It's not the nation that the, that the sun never, never set on the, on the empire. It's not the, the nation of the, the rising sun. Hey, that's nothing. That's, this is the nation of all nations. God has never done anything that he has done to this nation and for these people. And then their stiff neck had not really been thankful for what God has done for them. Have they ever yet just had a celebration of their own merit without any works, without any song. They say, they say, they say Moses, yeah, yes. Can we just stop here and just, just praise the wonderful greatness of God and just out of our own heart, just give and just, just for God. I think Moses would have fell over and had a heart attack. And now, and the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. So it's future. For it is a terrible thing. He's going to destroy the nations. It's terrible. It's frightening. It's not like, oh, it's so rotten thing. He's talking about terrible as in a God that's going to do things that's going to make you go, oh. Wow. You killed an army with a jawbone of an ass? Really? You mean God was born of a woman in a manger and shepherds came and, and saw it and went out preaching the word of God and two years later these magis come and bring him gifts and they don't worship the Mary for the church but they worship that baby? You mean to tell me that a woman comes in and dumps an alabaster box on his head and washing his feet because they did not have time of the of this of the preparation of this of the uh, Passover to anoint him properly? Greater and bigger things are yet to come, God's saying. And I will do with thee, the Jews, observe. 
Thou that which I command thee this day, behold, I drive out before you the Amorite. Now here's the kingdom. Here's the heaven, heavenly force of bringing in the kingdom by people and by armies. And this is where the Catholics and this is where the people steal the identity of the Jew. We can go in there and kill people. We can go in there with armies and bring in the kingdom of God. There's a kingdom of God being reached in Italy. There's a kingdom of God being reached out in Utah. There was that new Jerusalem, that city on the hill with a light shining in Massachusetts. Our pilgrim fathers were crucified, were killing, were, were confiscating property, were killing Christians in the name of, I'll get rid of all these enemies. The Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hevite, and the Jebusite. Now pay attention to the Jebusite, because that's one of the important names, because that's where Jerusalem will be. That will be the land of Benjamin. And David says, if anybody will conquer those Jebusites, I'm going to reward him. And Joab becomes the military leader. And you get the city of David. Jebusite is one of the good names here to study. And take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou goest. They don't take heed. Book of Judges. Start in Joshua, but more in the book of Judges. Least it be for a snare in the midst of you. You know what's a snare of America? You allow all these religions. You marry into these religions. You permit these religions. Same what the Bible says. But ye shall destroy their altars. Break their images. And cut down their groves. Destroy, break, and cut. That way you will have no way. Nothing to remind yourself of their gods. And you saw that when the kings, certain ones of Judah, had a revival in the nations. They would build that temple back up. They will fix it up. They will drive out the Sodomites. They will destroy those those images, those idols. Uh, I forget what I said. In the mountains, I think they said. The only places they didn't touch. You want it? A Bible true revival, you gotta get rid of these images, you gotta get rid of these altars, you gotta get rid of the groves. As a nation, not an individual Christian, not a church, but if you want to be a nation under God, you gotta drive the gods out. But we won't do that. For thou shalt worship no other gods, which they have already done. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, match that back to what we read in Exodus 20, is a jealous God. There's no sharing. There is, this is a non-liberal verse. Liberals will not like this verse. We all got to get together. We're all going to heaven. No. Least thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And they go a whoring. Now, how's that word? A whoring. After their gods. And do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And they will do this. And this will cause the destruction of Jerusalem, the walls and the temple, by Babylon. This will cause the Assyrians will come in and take the captivity of the children of Israel, the northern tribes. And thou take of their daughters and unto thy sons, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods. And make thy sons go a whoring after their God. Now, that's a great word. Whore. How, how do you like God explaining that one? Mixed marriage. When it comes to religion. God says you're a whore. You want to confess that sin? 1 John 1, 9. Well, you see, my husband's Catholic. And I'm a Baptist. You're a whore. 
He's got a different God than you do. Now here's another. Let's take a look. Revelation 17:1. Take a look at this one. Let's see what this says. Revelation 17. It's all good. The whole Bible's good. Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. It's good. Let's see. Revelation 17. 1, I think I said. Let's see what let's see what oh look at this one. This is great. There came one of the seven angels. Which had seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show ye unto you the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. I mean, this is a universal national God religion. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with her with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and the filthiness there's only one religious system going all the way around the world, and all the world's loved her. And it carries a cup. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the Great. All in capital letters. The Mother. Uh, there's only one name that calls her Mother Church. Of harlots. Harlots. There it is. There's that ore. And abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. She's killing Christians. And the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Christian killer. And when I saw her, I wondered great at her, ad, at her admiration. And verse 18, last verse, 666. And the woman which thou sawest, what we just read, is that great city. She's a city of religion. A whore. And when we come back over here, when you mix that marriage, God calls you a whore. Paul will say, Go to Mary. And he said, Paul, he says, you know, I wouldn't marry if I were you. But that's my, and he does, that's my own opinion. And I speak, I believe I speak of the spirit where he said, but he says, if you're going to marry, marry only in the Lord. That's it. That's it. That's what the Bible says. And you can't go anywhere else. Thou shall make thee no molten gods. And he just imagine this Aaron sitting there kicking the sand. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you, Moses. And we run to that trouble. Let's look at the last chapter of Joshua. Joshua 24. And verse 21. Oh, don't. Joshua 24, 21. And Joshua standing before the, the nation of Israel, the people. And the people said to Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said, unto, Now remember, Joshua was there at the, at the golden calf. Remember that. Ye are witnesses against yourself that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they say, We are witnesses. That's an oath. Now therefore, put away, at, said he, the strange gods which are among you and incline their heart unto the Lord God of Israel who we're talking about now in Exodus and the people said unto Joshua the Lord our God will serve and his voice we will obey his voice Exodus 20 
And Joshua made a covenant. Like there's a covenant being made right now. Wait a minute. Joshua. Did the Holy Spirit for, forget to mention that they got rid of the gods? Did the Holy Spirit uh, uh, just overlook that? Let's go to Genesis 35, 4. Let's see what the Holy Spirit would do. Genesis 35, 4. This nation has been surrounded by idolatry. Genesis 35, 4. And God saying, knock it off. And when they came out of Egypt, they're carrying gods of Egypt. Aaron showed us the golden calf. That's an Egyptian god. That's a Muslim God. And Joshua, the land has been taken over. They've given in to the, what God told them not to do. There are these people left, the Canaanite, the Hethite, the Perizzite, the Hethite. There are those people still left when Joshua dies. We're going to do everything God tells us, they say, and they haven't. And so let's see if the Holy Spirit accidentally forgot to record them getting rid of their idols. 35. Genesis, verse 2, And Jacob said unto the household, and to all that were with him, all the people of Jacob, put away thy strange gods. Well, it doesn't that match what we just read. That are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. You look like the world. You dress like the world. My wife warned me today, we're coming home from ministry and with bikers. We don't look over there, hon. There's a naked woman. She had some clothes on. No, she didn't. No. She may have thought she had clothes on. Yeah. Change your garments. And the other one at last night at Oh, yeah. Um, in America, you got to not change your garments. Put some garments on, will you? And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make the uh, altar unto God. So... Like Joshua, Jacob says, get rid of those gods. So, from verse 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods. Ooh, that didn't happen to Joshua. Which were in their hand. They're holding them. Oh, eat plumes, human, you know, hell, Mary, you full of grapes and all that other kind of stuff. And, and all their earrings... Did you recognize that one with Aaron? Why did Aaron call for the earrings? Which were in their ears. At least they had in a good spot. But And Jacob hid them under the oak, which was by Shechem. I don't think the Holy Spirit did not unrecord them getting rid of those. They never got rid of those idols. Jacob and his clan got right. Joshua, he's standing before a bunch of whores that are liars. A false report that is recorded in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear a false report. We will do everything that God has told us to do. Uh, why is there still the Canaanite, the Hittite, Perizzite, Hevite, and Jebusite? And, and the Joshua. Why? Did you really do everything? All right, put away all those gods, which we're reading now. Oh, we will do. And then he makes a covenant, but there's no recording of getting rid of those idols. And yet the Holy Spirit has told us, I would re-record that. You know how does that happen today for a Christian? Let's say a man gets saved and he's in a religion, he's got all that, he's got the beads. And within time, he, he gets saved and he gets rid of that stuff. How does the Holy Spirit record that like we just read now? God, the Father, the Jesus, the Calvary. I didn't realize that these beads and this cross is wrong, Lord God. I am sorry, it's in the garbage can. I don't want to have anything to do with that again. How does the Holy Spirit record that? He takes the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, 9, and wipes it right off the book. It's not in the book no more. And then, you know, at the judgment seat of Christ, what about those idols I, I worship in those? What idols are you talking about? What, what are you talking about? I grew up in that religion. I, I'm so sorry, Father, that I did that. I don't know what you're talking about. Did you plead the blood of Jesus Christ? Yes, Father, I'm sorry. Well, if you put the blood of Jesus Christ, I don't see it. Isn't that grace? 
Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a, a, a God that is merciful, forgiving the iniquity of thousands, that the fact is you plead the blood of Jesus Christ and you are sorry you repent? God says, I just wipe it right off. Now, do you want to go to the law where God writes it down and tells you what you've done? Or do you want to have it erased by the blood of Jesus Christ? I'd rather have this side of Calvary. So, and I make a covenant with thou shalt not make no molten gods. And that's the trouble with. The feast of unleavened bread thou shalt keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I command thee in the time of the month Abed. For in the month Abed thou came out from Egypt. Remind yourself where you came from. All that opens the matrix is mine. Every firstling among the cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is a male. Oh, Dad, that's Boris. He's so cute. Oh, he's so wonderful. Give him someone else of the cat. No, can't do it, dear. But I love him so I don't care. I got to give him. Wow, that is the best sheep I've got. Man, look at all that wool on him. He could be a fortune. No, it's God's if it's the first. But the firstlings of an ass. Now this is unsaved man. What's the unsaved man? Thou shalt redeem with a lamb. How about Jesus? And if thou wilt redeem him not, thou shalt break his neck. In other words, kill him. If you're not going to receive Jesus Christ, you just might as well kill him because you're just going to... It's a worthless life. Whether you're 80, 90, whatever age you live to, if you will not be redeemed with the lamb... When you die, your life is, you enter off into eternity, into hell. And if you're stubborn as an ass, see, all the firstborn, of, and also said, you know, as far as an ass, that the unsaved man, God doesn't want you. If you will not have a lamb, thou shalt not, uh, then thou shalt break his neck. All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. When it comes to those three times we're going to look right now, you better have something in your arms. Bring up the day. You better not, sh in the law, you better not show up to church with no, nothing for the plate. In the law. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In earring, I don't care if it's the harvest. I don't care if you're plowing. That seventh day, you're going to rest. And in the harvest, thou shalt rest. Oh, look at all the stuff we got. Man, we're going to have to work over. Okay. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. That is Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Of the first fruits of thy wheat harvest. That's summer. And the feast of ingathering. That's the feast. The, yeah, that's the feast of the booths, um, tabernacles, at the year's end. That would be the seventh month. Tri thrice, three times, in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. And that would be in Jerusalem. I will cast out the nations before thee. And enlarge thy borders so Israel is supposed to grow and grow. But they sin. Neither shall any man desire thy land. Tell that to the United Nations. Tell that to the PLO. Tell that to the Arabians. When thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. So when your male, your male children come to Jerusalem was three feasts he's three times a year no one is going to all oh, the Jews are all in Jerusalem let's go tackle no they won't God will send that area that part of the world peace while you go where you're supposed to go don't you fear about someone's gonna attack your family or your land I will take care of that how's that that's what the United Nations claims that it will give you peace and all that. We've had more wars on the United Nations than anywhere else. 
Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. No leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left under the morning. It was to be burned. No second, uh, no, um, no leftovers. leftovers. I couldn't think of the, the first of the first fruits. That when you go out and harvest your land, the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God, the temple. So your first harvest, you go down to Jerusalem, it belongs to God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. You saw that in 23, 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words. Did he? What are we reading? Moses wrote the Bible. God told you to and do. It didn't go poof. Okay, there's... It didn't happen by accident. For after the tenor, and it is three, the sound. Wait a minute. Moses, write these words for after the tenor of these words. As my mouth speaks to you, Moses, as I lift up my voice high or lift up my voice low, write it. Oh, God, you really mean business? You better believe I mean business. Yeah, this is just information. Write that down. Stress this point. Boy, God got loud with me in that one. And he wrote upon the tables of the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So there wasn't just Ten Commandments on those stones. Written on both sides. People don't read their Bible. And he was there with the Lord, Jehovah, 40 days and 40 nights. This follows, guess who? Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. 40 days and 40 nights, men that have been on the mountain. No food, no water. He did, ne he did neither eat bread nor drink water. It's not needed when you're with God. It's not, you know, when we all get to heaven, we're going to have a, a table spread and all that. I don't think we're going to need food and water. We'll have new bodies. I don't know. We do, we do, we don't. And he wrote upon the tables of the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. He's obedient to what God told him. Even in starving, well, fasting. And it came to pass when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai, this is the second time with the law, with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the Mount that Moses wist, that means he knew not, he had no idea, that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So this is where you get the nimbus. You say, well, what's a nimbus? It's a halo that shines the face. And it only happens to one man, Moses. It could have happened to a second man when Moses was around, when Jesus became white, glistering, that no fuller could have filled him. But Jesus did not walk around like that in Jerusalem. There were some people that, who is that? That's Jesus. Oh. Thought he'd be taller. Thought he would have a thing around his head or something. So, Moses, because he's seen God as much as he's seen God, verses 5 through 9, his face is glowing. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone. And they were afraid to come nigh unto him. What's going on with you, Moses? I've been with God. Too bad you guys ain't shining like I am. Remember God said, only you come up. No one else. So, and afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them the commandment. 
all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until 31. And when Moses called unto Aaron all the rulers of the congregation, returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterwards all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them the commandment, all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai, until Moses had done speaking with them. He put a veil on his face. When he is speaking to them, there's a veil. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, the Lord, he took the veil off until he came out. He came out and he spank on the children of Israel that were with him, was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again, until he went and speak with the Lord. So every time he, he's not with the Lord, he's wearing a veil. And when he's speaking to the children of Israel, he's speaking through a veil. Now that has sufficiency in 2 Corinthians 3.13, Paul will tell us what it, what it means. 2 Corinthians 3.13. We'll see this again. That veil was Moses. I've seen God. You can't look. God. I'm taking this veil off because I can't hide nothing from you. So, 2 Corinthians 3, 13. The Bible says, where it start? Verse 12, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. So our words are plain. You can hear it. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. Oh, there it is. That the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For unto this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which the veil is done away in Christ. That veil of Moses represents, hey, you're, you're not believing me. You're not listening. You're not going to get to see God. And Jesus Christ, if they do not, the nation of God, they do not believe on Christ as the Messiah, as the Savior. They read in their synagogues every Saturday the Old Testament. And the Bible says through Paul, who is a Jew of all Jews, they have no idea what they're saying, and they have no idea what they're doing. They have been blinded. And the only way for that veil to come off the Old Testament is they are to believe on Christ, and when they get into the New Testament, and with the Old Testament, and the Old Testament with the New Testament, and study to show themselves through on the government, wow, okay, now I see. For most Jews, if you were to take to them Isaiah 53 and read them Isaiah 53, they will agree with you, but they will say that's not Jesus Christ. That is us, the, the Jews. And the persecution is coming from you dead dogs and Gentiles. And when you remind them that Isaiah 53 is singular, well, we're one nation unity. They don't understand. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it, their heart, shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. When Moses went before God, he took that veil away. So, Jews have been blinded today. Because their unbelief in Jesus. Moses has got a veil on them when it comes to the word of God. Because they have not believed what God has already said to them. 
And what we read today, I showed you in Joshua. They are not obeying what God sold them the law already. Even though they get the job, we'll do everything. No, you won't. 